Welcome back to another edition of The Creative Quarantine, born out of necessity and fueled by imagination. On this episode, we're going to be doing a fun fall project, No So Pumpkins, something that can be put out for Halloween and left out through Thanksgiving. Okay, so what are we going to need to do this? Because it's No So, I will be using a shirt sleeve here. You could use pant legs, anything that's already sewn and in the round. Um, if you have sewing capabilities, uh, that just gives you a wider variety of options. You're going to need stuffing. I'll be using actual stuffing, uh, but you could use anything from paper towels to rags, um, leftovers of the shirt, uh, anything like that, even newspaper. I like stuffing because it gives it a little bit of a smoother uh, look to it. Uh, you're going to also need twine. I like twine over yarn because uh, it's a bit stronger. You're going to need to be able to cut all of that so household scissors work. I will be using a rotary cutter today, which also means I will be using a straight edge. Uh, you're going to want glue. Uh, Elmer's works best because uh, you can't see it after it dries. Uh, so to be able to get the vine look, you're going to need something like a pencil with a coating or a uh, paintbrush uh, so you can wind it around that. And if it's plastic or it has that coating on it like a pencil, it's easier to get off. You don't need it, but tape can help you. And today I will be using a darning needle, uh, which will help me be able to um, wrap around some of that twine to make it a little bit stronger. All right, now that we know what we need, let's get creating. All right, now that we have our materials laid out in front of us, uh, you can see here that I used one sleeve and got three pumpkins out of it. So, because it's a little bit skinnier down here, I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter so I get a little bit more of a baby pumpkin out of it, uh, leaving a little bit larger section in the middle so I can get a slender but taller pumpkin. And uh, because of the shoulder area that you see here, um, I got a bit more of a lopsided pumpkin, which right now is tending to be one of my favorites. So we're gonna go ahead and cut our shirt. Like I said, I am gonna use a rotary cutter. If you use one of these, make sure you're careful because that is extremely sharp. And we're gonna go smaller. I don't have exact measurements because a lot of it is just playing around and seeing what you get. So now we're gonna cut our twine. Uh, it's up to you on what color you would like to use. Uh, I think I'm gonna try green with this one. And I like to go extra long. And we're gonna say about there. And because I like odds versus evens, uh, we're going to cut seven strands. All right, so we have seven strands of twine, and I like to go longer than the piece itself. And then you tie all seven pieces in one knot. sure that knot is tight. We take this, lay this down, turn this inside out. And I'm going to have this part be the bottom. So I feed all of this through till I get to the knot. And now I cut a small piece. And I like to try to do side to side, end to end, and then kind of bunch up the rest. And cinch that together, pull it real tight. 
bring it around to the other side. But before I do that, I'm gonna pull, because I have a little bit more showing. I want that knot as close to the tie as possible. So I'm gonna pull that down so that kind of snuggles inside. Come around to the other side and tie that into a knot. See, and this is where you can really pull on twine where you can't do that with yarn. And you don't have to, but I like to go around to the other side and do that one more time. You really want to secure this because you're, you're going to be yanking on that uh, twine quite a bit. And after I get that tight, I like to take my glue and put that right on the knot. And I like to squish that right into the twine itself. Put a little bit on the back side. You don't want to put tons because you don't want to get that into the cloth. Uh, you want to get that into the twine. There we go, it's rubbed in. And you don't have to, but I do like to cut those down a bit. Elmer's doesn't take a long time to dry, but uh, if you want to speed it up, you can always use a hair dryer. So now we turn that inside out like that. And this is where we start to put the stuffing in. So these strings you have coming out, you want to try to keep those to the middle. So I like to break it up and put a little on each side in the beginning so I can keep that in the center. And depending on the cloth you choose is depending on how stretchy it is. So you want to take that into account as you're putting in your stuffing. So the nice thing is, is when you put that in, if you want to keep it nice and smooth, if you put in other pieces, to keep it from looking lumpy, you kind of push that down and kind of pull it around and you'll get a much smoother look out of it. So because we're bringing all of these edges back, you want to make sure you're pull, uh, filled but not overly filled. I got a little bit of room left in there. We're going to put a little bit more stuffing in. You're going to want to cut one more piece. And then just like the bottom, you kind of take one side over, and then the opposite side, and then that side, and the other side, and then squish it together. And you want to try to have a little above, so that way you can tie your string around it. And this is what's going to secure everything. So like I just had a little piece come out there, I need to make sure that that is pulled in and underneath so that way it's around the string.
and you want to try to keep your strings equal length because you're going to be going all the way around a couple of times. Cinch that really tight and we're going to do it again on the other side. So right now we're looking a little squat. You can pull from the bottom and then pulling on the cloth, not the strings. You can pull that up and make that a little bit rounder and then you push in, kind of scrunch it up a little bit to make that a little rounder. All right, so now that I like where we're at, we're gonna tie a knot in here. Then we're gonna take our bottom strings and put them out in seven different directions. Loosely. We're gonna bring that around to the other side. So this is where you get a lot of strings and that can be a little confusing. So if you take, making sure you do not get your tie strings in there, taking just the strings that come out the top and take and wrap a piece of tape around them. Kind of keeps those in check. Now, let's spread those back out. Okay, so now we need to take and see where our tie strings are. And this one would end up in the middle of that, so we're gonna leave that off to the side. Bring these others up. And our tie strings back around. Securing those all in place. Take our tie strings. So if you get up too high and there's a little bit of a space in there, let it loose and bring that back down because you want to keep it as close to the pumpkin shape as possible. Secure it back down. Now we're going to go back to the other side and take that last one. Depending on the size of your pumpkin, sometimes this, instead of just one, uh, you'll end up with um, two, sometimes three. Tighten that down, make a knot. There we go. And then, because these are still loose, you still have the capabilities of moving these around. There we go. This is our knot. So we wanna keep in mind where this string is up here and making sure that we don't get any glue on it. But at this point, I also like to put a bit of glue on this knotted area. making sure I secure everything in place. 
Kind of working that into the twine itself. Okay. Pull that tight again. So you could cut these off, or I like to try to take them and put them underneath and wrap them around. And then it kind of gives you a little bit more of a, a realistic looking stem. opposite way. go. Alright, so this is part of where the artistic expression gets to come in. Remember that no pumpkin is perfectly um, even. So I like to take and make some smaller pieces, some larger ones, and kind of bring those around. Uh, I kind of like the, the gordier looking pumpkin, but uh, you could also do, uh, not pull these quite as tight, and also do more of a traditional pumpkin shape. So, now that these are all secure, uh, if you're going to do just a traditional pumpkin, you just pull in just a little bit on each one of these. And that's going to kind of give you a little bit more of that traditional pumpkin shape. Uh, I keep tending to go towards that gordier looking shape, so I'm going to pull them tighter. Really giving it some character. So now that I have all of those kind of laid out and I like that shape, uh, this is where the darning needle comes in handy because you can take each one of those strings and bring it up underneath where it already is. Pulling it tight, getting that part that's around here nice and tight. And then you pull on this. And now that's secure in its spot. And then you just kind of keep going all the way around, doing each one. It's easy to tell if you've done that one or not because, like this here, I can pull and nothing moves, or I go to this one and I can kind of see it moving down below. All right, I got them all done. So now is the decision whether you're going to make vines or no vines. This one, we're going to go ahead and put a few vines in. So I like to determine which is my longest one. And all of these are pretty close, but that one's just a touch longer. So I like to take this one out, and just so it's easy to tell, 
I'll go ahead and put the darning needle on it. We won't be using the needle, but it's just so that way I can single that one out. So that one's there. Now I like to look at it and try to even out which ones I'd be using for a vine. So we can't count that one. So I'm gonna put one here, here, here and here. So I'm gonna take these up because those will be vines and that one doesn't count. And I'm gonna put another piece of tape on this. There we go. So these other ones, sometimes it helps to bring them down. Make sure I don't have my one that I'm gonna use for my stem. Put another piece of tape around these, and this just helps keep them out of the way. Okay. So now these are all out of my way, and this is going to be the one that makes my stem. So I'm gonna take the needle off, and I'm gonna start winding. And I'm gonna get as close as I can to that pumpkin and wrapping extremely tight as close as I can to each wrap so that way it covers up that cloth. You want to make sure that it looks proportionate to the pumpkin you have. Now, like I said, no two pumpkins are the same, but you don't want something that looks way too big or way too small. There we go. I like the look of that. So, I know that the end of my twine is right there. So I'm gonna take some Elmer's and put that on. And I'm gonna kinda just squish that in as best as I can, work it right into the twine. I wanna make sure I don't get it on the fabric And I don't want to get it into all of this excess stuff at the top either. So from here to here is my stem, and that's where I want to make sure I get all of the glue. So remember, that Elmer's dries clear. So if you get a glob somewhere in there, don't worry about it because it dries clear. And it will make the stem very hard, but the nice thing is, is it's not really gonna distort the color of the twine that you're using. So I want that end to lay flat, so I'm just gonna hold that for a second, just to kind of let that glue tack up and hold. And remember, you can always speed this up using a hair dryer. There we go. That's holding down pretty well. If it starts to lift up a little bit, later on I can always put a little bit more glue right there and hold it down and let it dry and it'll stay. Looks good. So now I'm gonna leave all of this up here right now until this dries a little bit longer, uh, but then that's where I will cut it off right where the top of the stem is gonna be. And the nice thing is with leaving all of this excess twine, 
it gives you a little bit darker, but it gives you the same color as your stem there. If you leave um, some of the fabric coming out the top and don't go all the way up, when you cut it off, you're gonna end up with that fabric color right in there. So we'll let that part dry. And while that's drying, we're gonna take off this piece of tape that we put down for these. There we go. So this part does take a little bit longer and this is where I like to let it dry for a bit. So you take these, these are um, way too long. So you can take your scissors and randomly cut them down at different sizes. Don't throw those away because you can use those later if you're doing more pumpkins. And if you go a little bit longer, you can always cut it down later. So we'll throw those off to the side. And because twine is made up of multiple pieces of thread, I like to undo them to make them a little bit thinner. So I like to vary things up a little bit. Uh, so I'll take uh, two to three pieces and make these tighter curly cues. Uh, I'll take a single strand and make these lighter ones uh, because uh, when you go to the pumpkin patch, there's always different thicknesses for those vines. Break a few of those apart. And then I like to cut these at various lengths also. Take a little bit of glue. Not a lot because you want to make sure you don't get any on the fabric itself. work that right in and then vary things up a little bit so this one it's a little bit longer so I'll take this thin paintbrush and I'll wrap it kind of a longer wrap so that way they're not close together and I'll let that dry. And then I'll come over to the other side. Sometimes if it doesn't want to stay, sometimes you need to take a little bit of a piece of a tape. So that way it's staying on the tighter side. There we go. I can come to this side. Take one strand out, I'll put the two back together, and this one I'm going to make it a tighter vine. And do wraps that are fairly close together, but you want to make sure that they don't touch because if they touch, they're gonna to be glued together and you won't get them apart. So we'll get them a little bit closer and do that. And now I'll leave that uh, and let that dry. Again, you can speed this up using a hair dryer, uh, but this is one where I'll work on multiple pumpkins at the same time. So I'll do this, set this one off to the side, and then that's where I'll grab another pumpkin and work little by little here, and then I have this off to the side so I can still work with that. So when I'm ready to take those off, I'll kind of hold them at the top, pull that out, and then you can see our little cur curly cue that we have there. So then I can go to the next one. And do more and you just kind of keep working it around until it's done. There we go, that feels that that's pretty good. So, uh, if it's good, you don't see any cloth coming through, you can go ahead and cut these off. If not, 
take one of these and start wrapping from the top and wrapping down to the base. Uh, so that way you take up any uh, open spots. But we're good to go, so we're going to just cut that right off, round that top back up so that way it looks like it should be. Throw those off to the side and do another piece. Thank you for joining me on this fall project. Uh, hopefully you will continue this and, you know, uh, experiment with different types of printed fabrics or textures or color combinations, seeing what you can come up with. Uh, maybe you can make one for every holiday throughout the year. You know, create your own pumpkin patch. Uh, thank you again, and as always, share with us on our Facebook page.